just once saved, always saved. I think you can fall away from the faith. Because I think you can. Ah! No, ah! Ah! Okay, that was embarrassing. Hey guys, welcome back to Kingdom Craft. So right now I'm stuck in a cave because I lost all my stuff because I was an idiot and like dug straight down and I picked up some food along the way but aside from that I have barely any resources so I'm just going to try and see if I can recover my stuff. I know it's probably been way too long since I died and dropped my stuff so it's probably all disappeared. So what's the video going to be about today? Well. I think being stuck in a nightmarish cave is a good metaphor for being a Christian in a public high school these days, which is something that I had to go through. Um, let me turn down the volume. Yes, I went through 13 years of public school in the New York City area. So yes, I. it really did feel like being stuck in a weird, dark, scary cave. Um, so I wasn't a Christian the whole time. Like, um, my family's religious history is complicated. Um, there's been a lot of floating around. My parents sort of wanted me to be Christian in a vague sense. I, I mean, they, they clearly did want that. But we weren't a consistently church-going family, so I didn't start consistently going to church voluntarily until high school. I became a Christian when I was 14. And that put the nail in the coffin of my social life at school, pretty much. Okay, this is where I went down in the cave last time. So, before I was Christian, I agreed essentially with the values of my secular community. Even though there was some religion in my family, uh, my community was completely secular. I was never a Christian myself, even though my parents did take me to church occasionally, um, even consistently at it for a period of time. I completely rejected it inside. Um, so, yeah, I myself held to the secular, progressive, left-wing values that, you know, my school and local community did. I was very progressive myself. I was a huge, ah, okay, I was a huge, like, Bernie Sanders supporter, for example. Okay, I'm gonna try not to die in this cave. And during the, like, 2016 election, I was constantly talking about, going on these huge rants about how evil conservative Christians were, how they're destroying the environment, how they don't want people to get health care. Uh, all these, you know, left-wing talking points. And I was one of the most radically progressive people in my already liberal progressive school community. So that's why it came as a big shock to everyone, um, all my friends who are mostly Jewish or atheist, when I became a Christian. They started saying, like, they were a bit concerned. They were like, okay, I hope you're not going to become one of those, like, homophobic, transphobic, xenophobic, everything-phobic people. And I assured them I was still, like, going to be liberal, because I still did, for a time, want to be a Christian and still be left-leaning. Like, I called myself a Christian, and I also called myself a socialist when I was 14, not because I actually read any theory, mostly because I liked the Soviet anthem. That's pretty much every 14-year-old boy's reasoning for calling himself a socialist. But, you know, becoming a Christian did open my mind to conservative ideas, because I had seen... Um, when I became a Christian at this Christian summer camp in the Midwest, that Christians weren't the bigoted, evil, hateful people that the media had told me they were. I used to always watch, like, The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, which portrayed, like, rural American Christians as the most idiotic, like, ridiculous, stupid, and mean people you could possibly imagine. It was just a ridiculous caricature of them. But that's what I believed, because that's I hadn't actually really met many conservative Christians, my age at least. So that's just kind of a, what I assumed that they were. So meeting them and realizing they weren't like that really opened my mind to their ideas, even though I was mostly liberal. But the way leftism works and the way cancel culture works at your high school is it's not enough to be mostly liberal. You need to be 100% progressive leftist like them. And if you disagree with them on one issue, you're canceled. You're excommunicated. It's like the most fundamentalist religion ever. Leftism really is a religion. I talk about that a lot. Um, okay, I really don't think I'm going to get back my stuff at all. I think that's all disappeared. So now I just have to get new stuff. I lost several diamond tools. 
Um, so I guess I'm gonna I'm in this cave now. I'm gonna have to look for more diamonds, I guess. So yeah, um, I was in that school, and I started to question one of my previously held left wing beliefs. Just one. I was. It was of course the transgender issue. That's usually the first issue that gets former leftists to start questioning leftism. I was like. I don't really think there are 76 genders the way my health teacher told me they were. Like, seriously, in health class, um, we had speakers that were talking about, like, sexuality and gender, and they were like, okay, there's, um, gender's a spectrum, there's, like, 76 genders, and if you question that, you're homophobic. They literally told us that. They literally said, when, when I started to question that, they said, okay, um, you're sounding kind of homophobic. And... Once my friends saw that I was questioning that, they sort of interrogated me about my beliefs. They were like, okay, are you homophobic now? I said no, because I, I didn't believe I was homophobic. I just thought I had some questions about this, and I didn't necessarily believe in transgender ideology, even if I had no animosity towards transgender people. But that wasn't enough. They said I was canceled for that. So I basically lost all my friends in high school for questioning the um, left-wing narrative. And all that did was push me further to the right. But this happened all in my freshman year of high school, so I still had like three more years to be in high school and deal with all these people. So this is a video about like just how I survived in high school. Now, um, the students were more of a problem than the teachers. A lot of the teachers were, the teachers were for the most part like moderate liberals, like sort of Obama style liberals. Whereas the students were not liberal, they were radical leftist. I, I sometimes use the words interchangeably just because of, you know, common American parlance. But generally the difference is liberals are more open-minded and leftists are the least open-minded you'll ever meet. But there was still some lies that my teachers told me, especially in history class. History class was the most biased class by far. Interestingly, a lot of, you know, fundamentalist Christian parents are afraid of, like, what their kids will learn in science class. But science class was always extremely reasonable. Like, yeah, we, of course we learned about evolution, but they never said anything that implied it contradicts the existence of God or the idea that God created everything. Like, every time the teacher did talk about evolution, when she would begin the unit, she'd be like, um, this happened twice with two different teachers, she'd be like, yeah, you know, some people think God created everything and that might be the case. We're just gonna learn what the general scientific consensus is. And I think that's totally reasonable. I, I believe in evolution. I don't think it contradicts creation at all. And I think I do support teaching evolution in schools. I support also teaching, you know, values and theology and accurate history in schools and like philosophy and stuff, because the biggest lies that were told to me were in history class. They made it seem like all of the world's problems, all of the world's ills were the fault of white Christians. And that was it. Um, we didn't learn about like anything good the church ever did. The narrative was that um, the Roman Empire was a great place of progress and development until it fell thanks to the Christians, and the Christian Dark Ages were the worst time in human history. There was no science. Everyone was superstitious. No one took a bath. And the scientific revolution began in opposition to the church, and for that, the church tortured Galileo. Um... And the church has supported slavery and been against every form of social progress imaginable. And yeah, all that, all that stuff. They were, everything was basically blamed on white Christians. Like they, they taught, they taught slavery, which of course slavery happened. It was horrible, but every single civilization has done slavery and there were many slave trades that were much larger, more severe than the transatlantic one, like the Arab slave trade, that we didn't learn about at all. We learned somewhat about the ancient Egyptians having slavery, but what they said it was it was nowhere near as bad as what the white people did. Um, so, like, the leftists these days are like, we need to... Critical theory is just teaching slavery. It's like, everyone was already doing that. Everyone for the past, like, 100 years has learned about slavery. But the thing is, I want to talk about slavery. I want to talk about all slavery that's happened, not just the ones that one group of people did. And that's all that we learn about in school. Um, there's this um, YouTube video. I might even leave a link in the description. It's an Icelandic person talking about the absolute horrors of the Ottoman slave market. 
there were Muslims, Muslim pirates, like from Libya or from the Ottoman Empire, that would randomly kidnap Europeans and sell them into the Arab slave trade, which was a much larger slave trade than the transatlantic slave trade ever was. And I'm not saying the transatlantic slave trade was small. Of course it was huge. I'm just saying this is how ridiculously big and horrible the Arab slave trade was because it was really big compared to an already really big and horrible slave trade. Um, so yeah, we didn't learn about that all at all in history. And the way we learned about the church and science was completely backwards. It can be argued that the church was the biggest factor in the development of modern science. Like all societies have done some form of science. Of course, the ancient Greeks, Plato and Aristotle, did a ton of science. But the modern scientific method was founded by a devout, a devout Christian. Um, all the pioneers of the scientific revolution, like Galileo and Copernicus, either were devout Christians, or they were people like Isaac Newton, who didn't believe in like the Trinity, but believed the Bible and were strong believers in God. Like So Isaac Newton, we'd say, maybe he wasn't saved because he denied the Trinity, but he said atheism was super senseless. So the debate when it comes to science and religion isn't quite, do you confess the Nicene Creed? It's, do you think this is compatible with the existence of God or with religion? And all of the major fathers of science said yes, 100%. And um, the church was the biggest driver of social progress and science and all forms of learning in the Middle Ages. And the Dark Ages, the term Dark Ages to refer to the Middle Ages is a completely, is a complete misnomer, a complete, completely misaccurate title, misaccurate, a completely um, inaccurate title. Because, like, the university system and the hospital system was started by the medieval Catholic Church. Like, Oxford, for example, was started in the year 1000. Um, and, of course, it was started by the church. All the major, all the top universities that exist these days were started by Bible-believing Christians who did their, their learning for the glory of God. Like, Harvard was started by the Puritans, for example, to train train ministers. Princeton was started by Presbyterians. Oxford was started by the medieval church, which is the ancestor of both Catholics and Protestants today. So yeah, it's completely wrong what we were taught in school. They completely ignored all of that. But aside from that, the teachers themselves weren't the biggest problem, and a lot of times the teachers were way more reasonable than the students. Because here's a story. Um, even though my, um, and aside from teaching wrong things, the quality of the education was just really bad. Like, I had some excellent teachers and some horrible teachers, but you never know which one you're getting, because the public schools literally will not fire a teacher no matter how horrible they are. Um, so one of my teachers was my AP, um, AP World teacher, who would literally Wikipedia her lessons a few minutes before giving them to us, and they were filled with all sorts of ridiculous inaccuracies and she just did not care and she would I, I would I would occasionally point out that what she was teaching was not accurate and she would just get mad at me um, but one time she said something that was true she said like so many people have made so many like religious buildings and churches are beautiful religion inspires people to make beautiful things and I, and I just commented in class this is you know sophomore year of high school I said yeah people do a lot of things to the to the glory of God and my entire class unanimously turned on me and said something like, oh no, they were just um, doing it for money and God was the excuse. They had like a completely cynical view of everything religious. Um, there was another time in high school, um, someone, uh, it was a group discussion for some like, I don't know, cringy sort of peer leadership thing. I, I don't even know what, what the point of this was. Basically, it was a bunch of kids in a circle. And one of the leaders asked us, like, just casually, like, does anyone here, like, really love church? I raised my hand, and out of, like, a ton of kids, I was the only one who raised my hand, right? Even though a lot of people identified outwardly as either Catholic or Jewish, all that really meant is, do you open your presents on Christmas or Hanukkah? Literally everyone, and I mean everyone, was, like, agnostic or atheist. No one was, like, a, a devout Christian. Sometimes... I would, like, talk to my friends who were from the Midwest, and they were just like, oh, if you're lonely, if you don't have friends, just join a Christian group at school, join a Christian club. I was like, I'm in New York, there are no Christians here. 
I was literally the only one. Eventually, in my junior year of high school, um, there was this one other Christian kid who came. He was a Korean Methodist, and he was, like, the nicest kid in school. But before I could really get to know him, COVID started. So um, that didn't really work out. But, yeah, I was, I was completely alone. And were there Christians at church? Yes, but they were all boomers. So during my junior year of high school, um, my best friends were people like with names such as like Marge, Nancy, and George, and they loved me. They were they were great. I like the Bible studies at my church were always me and ten boomers, because you know those were all the people that were there. There were young people who occasionally showed up to church, but it was only because their parents dragged them, and I would hear them at school saying that they were atheist and didn't believe in any of it. It was a mainline Protestant church, so you can easily get away with being an atheist in one of those. Um, I still attend that mainline Protestant church because I believe strongly we need to retake the mainline churches. If you're if you're here for two seconds on my channel or my Instagram page, you'll know that that's a, um, a dead horse I will never stop beating, retaking the mainline church. And also, I think I, I mean, now the public schools are so hopelessly corrupt, I don't think there's any point in trying to retake them. But part of the reason the public schools got so bad was because in the early 20th century, when they were actually pretty good, a lot of the fundamentalist Christian parents said to leave the public schools, and surprise, surprise, if the Christians run away from the public schools, the public schools are going to become anti-Christian. I don't see why that was such a surprise to people, but... Yeah, these days, public schools are, for the most part, explicitly anti-Christian. And um, not just that. It's not like they're anti-Christian, but they're teaching good academics. They are horrible academically. And it's like, if you've ever taken, like, I don't know, a math class in high school, chances are the first YouTube video you will find will explain the math ten times better than your teacher ever could. <coughs> Because chances are your teacher probably doesn't even know the math herself. So, yeah, my um, when I went off to college, I just wanted to get as far away from my public school as possible. And for a while, I tried to like um, I don't know evangelize to the people in my public school, and it just didn't work. Their their hearts were totally closed off to anything. It's just Gen Z is so nihilistic. It's like Everyone was just stoned and didn't care about anything and just wanted to seek as much pleasure as possible. Everyone would, like, virtue signal to uh, to the world and, like... At one time, Greta Thunberg, that Swedish girl who sailed on a boat, went to New York City and yelled at a bunch of grown-ups about climate change. And everyone was like, yay, she's saving the environment. And then they would get drunk on the weekends and litter all over the forest... And me and the other Boy Scouts would spend our weekends cleaning up after them. So they were a bunch of just drunk partiers. Even some kids I wouldn't really expect. There were some people in my high school I thought, um, that person's a really good kid. I, I, I don't think they're doing any drugs or alcohol or partying. But I would actually find out that they were, and I just didn't know about it. So a lot of people will surprise you. And people will surprise their parents. It's like... I once was at, like, a, a dinner party at a family friend's house, and um, there was this one lady who was like, oh, my son is so good, he doesn't do any of those drugs or parties, and I didn't say this to her, but I was like, lady, I've seen Snapchat stories of your son vaping and being at those parties that you don't think he's at. So it was just so sad, like, a lot of these kids are, like, I don't know, getting drunk, having sex, and the parents were just totally oblivious to it. And at church, there were a lot of really great Christians at my church. It was a somewhat liberal mainline church, but there still was a, a band of solid, devout Christians and who were conservative. But even they, they were mostly boomers, and they were really oblivious to what was going on in my generation. A lot of boomers, even the conservative ones, are utterly useless when it comes to dealing with Generation Z's problems. They just don't understand how bad it is. Every time I talk to a boomer about how irreligious and secular and hedonistic Gen Z is, they're like, oh, they'll grow out of it. It's just a phase. They're just experimenting. It's like, okay, just because the boomers were a bunch of drunk idiots and eventually grew out of it doesn't mean that Gen Z will. Gen Z is 
hopelessly stuck in a downward spiral and is only going to get worse as time goes on. So I used to have an evangelistic mindset. I used to be like, I want to like preach to my whole school and make my whole school Christian. I had like that missionary mindset. Now I have a much more cynical view of Gen Z. I think things are going to get a lot worse before they get better. So I've, I've, I've done enough ranting about my school and Gen Z. So what, what should we do about it? It's not realistic to think Gen Z can collectively be redeemed. Of course, God can work miracles, but a lot of people are like, oh, there's going to be a revival. Trust me. I see a lot of these TikTok preachers saying like, I can feel Gen Z is going to have the biggest revival ever. ever. It's like, I don't know what God's going to do, but it's probably not going to be that. There's probably not going to be a revival for Gen Z. Gen Z is probably going to hell in a handbasket, collectively speaking. Of course, there's a remnant, and I know a lot of people who are in that remnant. Um, I, I'm, I'm guessing most of you guys watching this are in that remnant. Collectively, though, Gen Z is doomed. That's the hard truth we have to face. So our job is to preserve what is good from Christian society to sort of, like like what happened in the last Dark Ages, to sort of make monasteries, preserve what is good, so that a few hundred years later, when, um, when everything cycles through and people start being open to Christianity again, they have resources to draw on. So I think we should create subculture. So I'm not being re retreatist. I'm not saying we should retreat. I'm saying we need to just focus on protecting what's there, and that's why we need to retake the mainline Protestant churches. We can't retake society. That ship has sailed. We can retake the churches that we started. We can retake the mainline Protestant churches, and that's what needs to happen if any, anything good from the West is to survive. And I do think that while Gen Z is collectively really stupid and silly, Gen Z does know how to do crazy things. They do know how to... They are passionate. They can pull off some really cool stunts if they put their mind to it. So what we need to do is we need to get off our butts, start going to church, start forming communities, but not forming them out of thin air. We need to build on to existing church communities. One of my pet peeves is when churches are obsessed with making church plants, but ignore existing church communities that are dying out. I don't think we should really be doing church plants, frankly. I think we should be going into those old mainline churches where the attendance is like 10 boomers, those old beautiful buildings, and we should be focusing on recovering places like that, not on trying to start from scratch. We, it's, people don't want to do that because it takes more effort. There's more problems you have to deal with, but often the harder thing ends up yielding more rewards. So if we're to preserve anything, it, it needs to be that. As to the issue of public schools, should everyone homeschool? Should we seek out Christian schools? Most like evangelical Christian schools are academically horrible. Most, not all, but you know, most. Um, I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know the answer to that. All I know is that we need to focus on creating good subcultures and preserving what we do have. And that's sort of what this channel is trying to do. It's trying to create, um, uh, like, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to expand the kingdom by not just talking about, like, theology, but connecting it to something that's cool, like Minecraft. I think Minecraft can have a ton of really important metaphors for Christianity. Alright, this episode didn't really have a theme, it was just a rant about Gen Z and my life as a Gen Z in like a secular school and stuff. So yeah, I hope that was somewhat helpful or entertaining. If not, I don't really care. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Bye.